Hi guys, today I'm talking about evaluating job offers. This is a multi-part series, given that a job offer consists of many different factors. But the most obvious one I had to start out with was about compensation. And you might think, duh Jay, compensation isn't that hard. You just look at the salaries and you see which one's the highest and you compare them. But that's not actually entirely true. So there's two main things to actually consider when evaluating how much money you'll make when you accept a tech job offer. You care about how much you're making per year, duh, otherwise known as total compensation. And you also care about the growth potential of the company you're working at. Total compensation is typically easier to calculate. You can usually calculate this by taking the base salary of your offer plus the RSUs or restricted stock units or stock options quantified into dollars received each year. For example, if the base salary is 100K and you get another 100K in stocks over four years, your total compensation will be 125K. This number, 125,000, is the total compensation, otherwise known as TC, and will usually influence how you might compare offers directly against each other. Many companies will also offer a signing bonus, but since this doesn't actually get promised each year, it's not terribly important unless you're planning to jump ship after only one year. So the growth potential of a company is actually the main thing I want to talk about. And it's a little harder to calculate and more obscure, but personally, I believe it's much more important. Many people undervalue the growth potential of some offers because they see the high TC given at fame companies or other big tech companies that can afford to give huge upfront offers. But while Fang can give lots of money and liquidity in the form of RSUs, allowing you to trade your shares for cash at any time, many times it's actually the private companies that will actually be able to grow tremendously in a short period of time that will multiply your shares to way more than you could actually ever gotten at a fan company. For example, if you join a startup or a company that increases their valuation by a multiplier of 10 in a few years, this RSU slash stock options part of your compensation will also go up by 10. A company like Stripe in 2014 was valued at $1.8 billion. And just two years later, the company was valued at $9.2 billion. This meant that if you had worked at the company for those two years and had gone 100K in stock, your stock value would have 5X to 500K instead, assuming you stayed around. And then, of course, five years after that, Stripe 10 x to $95 billion, making you a multi-millionaire if you never sold your shares. And I want to say that this isn't usually restricted to startups or private companies. Many companies in the past few years, like HubSpot, Adobe, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, have all increased their valuations by 5 to 10x or more, while staying public in just a few years during those periods. It's just that it's harder to continue to 10x after you've already done it a few times already, for example, if Amazon were to 10x again, it'd be worth over $10 trillion, which could happen, but they might have to buy their own planet or something before doing this again. So the trick to figuring out growth potential is to actually conduct diligence. Right? Imagine that you're a stock investor that is deciding whether to invest in a company or not. By working for that company and obtaining equity, you are essentially choosing to invest in the growth through contributing your own hard work and providing value. You're also putting a huge amount of your own uh, net worth into that one company. So if you're getting the sense that the company has bureaucratic issues or maybe the total addressable market of the company isn't that high, which limits the growth, then maybe it's a sign that the growth multiplier of the company isn't going to be very good. The real metric you want to optimize for is which company is going to grow the fastest in the shortest amount of time, all without actually exploding and failing, right? And the best way to actually conduct this diligence is usually to talk to the employees during the interview process. This is a valuable time to actually understand the product and obtain information that no one else can. Usually they'll be quite mum on metrics like historical revenue and things that really influence competition, but you can usually do some investigation into staff turnover, market potential, and be placed in a position to ask senior management some hard hitting questions. And the bonus is that most people at the company will enjoy answering such questions because then they'll realize that you're smart and at the same time, it'll improve your interview chances if you haven't gotten the offer yet. So a really easy way to do this is to ask them why they're excited to work at the company and really understand the value proposition of why it might be worth your time to work there as well. I'll say another tip is that many startups that are in the Series B or later stages are generally more secure. I'm told that raising a Series B is actually quite difficult. And even though it sounds like money is being produced out of thin air these days, once you actually get past a Series B, most companies will have a high growth trajectory, 
a good foundation of user growth and solid metrics that can be scaled up as well. The main thing to note is that on the flip side, if a company is growing fast, they probably won't give you that much equity because they know that the same equity they give you will multiply in the next few years or even months and obviously will want to retain it. So it comes back to being really important about getting information about the company and getting that negotiation power. You'll always be at an inf information disadvantage. They'll always know more about the company than you will. And so you have to use everything that you have towards your argument when you're negotiating your offer. And lastly, it's important to realize that money isn't everything, but it does matter a lot. And so I hope these tips kind of help you when you're evaluating your new job offers, when you're actually in the interview process for these new companies. And as always, please leave any comments or questions that you have about today's video in the comments below. I love reading the comments and actually getting new ideas for new videos. And so thanks for watching. Bye guys.